So today I'd like to talk a little bit about playing fast on the trombone. Uh, playing fast on the trombone is one of those things that many a trombonist strive for. Uh, and there's different levels of playing fast on the trombone. Uh, for some people, playing eighth notes at this tempo uh, da, 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 is fast for them. You know, it, it mostly depends on what level of development. Some people playing eighth notes here. Da, da, da. For some people playing sixteenth notes there is playing fast for them. Uh, but there's different levels, and this is mostly about just developing your fast playing and uh, technique in general. Technique meaning, yeah, to be able to get around on the horn, but mostly to be able to express what you want to say clearly and uh, effortlessly. So, uh, one of the first things I'm going to be talking about, I have a few categories I'm going to, I like to categorize playing fast in. Uh, the first one I'd like to talk about is passion. Uh, without passion, you're not going to get very far because it takes a lot of work to get to a high level of playing, including playing fast. Uh, it takes a lot of hours, you sacrifice a lot of things, you know, being social and sometimes homework maybe if you're at a university and not a conservatory. Um, but it takes a lot of drive and passion and it, it can wear you out really fast if you're not motivated and passionate about it. So passion is one of those things. I remember uh, when I first started playing, you know, I wanted to be, like, the best. And not, not the best, like, to be the best, but just kind of to prove people wrong about the trombone. Oh, the trombone has this, you know, they th it has this reputation about being slow and lethargic and sloppy. So uh, I wanted to kind of prove people wrong and got all motivated and started practicing really hard in late high school, a little bit later than I wanted to. But over the years, it's kind of developed into just showing people something beautiful that the you know they've never heard before and the trombone and people can hear you play a certain way on the trombone it's pretty amazing uh, the responses they get um, but yeah passion is a big part of it and if you kinda have an ego about it I mean you can get a certain level of development but you're gonna miss out on a lot uh, I don't know it's not really the right thing to do uh, maybe for a little bit you know because everyone wants to be great and be known for something so that's passion Passion is number one. Uh, another thing is hearing. Being able to hear uh, what you're going to play before you play it. Uh, singing can help with that, solidify the sound in your head. The more ways you can uh, express the sound in your head, the better. Like, the more founded it becomes in you. Uh, like, for example, here I'll play something. Uh, I'm not the best singer, but I can kind of get it out. So if I'm going to play uh, a little bebop line like uh, You have to be able to hear it faster if you want to be able to play faster. So bum, I don't know if I can sing it as fast. So, bum, you know, I can, for the most part, I can sing that maybe not very clearly at a fast tempo because I don't practice it enough, but, you know, sometimes I do it on the piano. Again, my technique isn't really amazing on there. But being able to hear what you're going to play before uh, you play it is a huge thing. A lot of you already know that, but, you know, if you haven't thought about that in a while, this is a really good reminder. Uh, so going on to the next thing that a lot of people ask about for playing fast on the trombone, you know, uh, what do you do for articulation? Uh, you know, what kind of articula articulation do you use? Double tongue, doodle tongue, legato, or really fast single legato tongue? Uh, mostly I used double tongue because I knew that it would be important on the trombone if you want to get around to be able to play fast. And single tongue, there's people that have like really fast single tongues. And... I'm not really gifted in the area of single tongue. I'm sure I could put a lot of hard work into it, but I just basically figured out it would be more efficient if I did the double tongue and worked on that and developed that. Of course, if, uh, the faster your single tongue is, the faster your double tongue is. Uh, most recently, I've been doing the doodle tongue. 
Uh, it's taking some time, but it's it's getting there. Mostly because I don't want it to sound sloppy, like a lot of people, you know, they rush through it. Same thing with double tonguing. Uh, the tendency with uh, doodle tongue is it's not clear enough, and then with double tongue it's too hard. So my double tongue is more of a legato double tongue. Uh, so let me just play an F scale. Here's single tongue at a slower rate. <laughs> It's semi legato. Uh, here's my double tongue, though. And then doodle tongue. I haven't. I just started a couple of months ago, but. It's mostly the air doing the work, and then with the tonguing, you have to learn how to first of all gain the the musculature uh, to be able to control. The, the airspeed and do all the normal things you do without tonguing with your tongue. It's kind of like an obstacle that you kind of overcome and it becomes uh, easier and easier over time. So, uh, but the air is doing a lot of the work. The tongue basically just defines it. So you get different kinds of articulations. Even within double, you know, here's like a more of a, I wouldn't say classical, but a harder double, a harder double tongue. And then you can go smoother and smoother. You know, there's a spectrum within that, and then double uh, doodle tongue. I haven't really worked that out enough yet. I just, like I said, I just started. I've been double tonguing for years, but doodle is kind of new. Uh, single tongue, of course. There's a lot of variation in there over the years. You develop the single tongue. Um, so uh, multiple tonguing, just like with anything else, you have to practice it slow. Uh, what I started doing actually about a year and a half ago is playing everything, just about everything with my double tongue. I was like, you know, I started thinking, man, you know, if, if my single tongue got to a certain point, then why don't I do that with my double tongue and just use it all the time, you know, even for the easier passages. So at some point, you can just transition between either one uh, effortlessly and seamlessly. So I'm going to... Let's, uh, here's like a, some single tongue right here. And then double. So here's like a slow double tongue and I'm going to speed up faster and faster. Single tongue, it's kind of limited. Like I said, people have really fast single tongues, but there's a li here's my my limit's pretty low. Here's single. That's like my limit right there. But you know, uh, conceptually, you should be able to to double tongue twice as fast as you can single tongue. So if your single tongue is really fast and you work on the double tongue over the years, you should be able to do it really fast. Um, so yeah, that's articulation in a nutshell, uh, multiple tonguing, this is what I use. Uh, going on to slide technique, that's a huge one. With slide technique, uh, I don't want to tell you guys too much and tell you all my little secrets, which aren't really secrets, stuff you pick up from people and stuff you learn on yourself, little breakthroughs you have in your plane. But uh, you want to make everything easy and effortless, uh, just like with tonguing. So as I'm going, I'm not trying to like muscle it away, you know, you want to keep things really easy. There's a certain technique that uh, Michael Dees showed me. And, you know, a lot of people, they use their arms at first, you know, they're too stiff if they don't learn the right way. And then uh, after a while, they start using their wrists. But yeah, the wrists too, but even like if you want to go farther, you can start using your fingers and, uh, you know, to get faster. Anything you can do, any little edge you can have. So there's a certain technique he uses, but in general, you want to keep things really easy and relax. Uh, so that's slide technique in a nutshell. And uh, another thing is actually putting some of this stuff to use. You know, you can practice all you want, all these scale patterns, uh, but if you don't, if, if you don't ever put it into use and apply it to your playing, 
then you know what's the point? You're like this guy who has all this amazing technique, or girl that has all this amazing technique, but you can't. You know what are you gonna use it for? So at some point you have to start using it on the bandstand or in rehearsal and start pulling that stuff out because it's another story, as many of you know, to practice one thing and then go on the bandstand or go perform it in front of someone and actually pull it off the way you want it to. So that's a whole other lesson in itself, performing and applying this stuff. Uh, and then in general too, you know, over a lot of people tell you, your teachers always tell you to practice slow. Practice slow, build it up, speed it up. Uh, but that's one of the really important things that people forget to do. Um, or they're just too lazy about it or too anxious and they want to get get good now. Uh, what I tell people is a little bit every day goes a long way. Imagine if you do this for, let's say, one month. A little bit every day. Let's say you spend 10 minutes on articulation every day. By the end of the month, you're going to be a lot better. Imagine doing that for, for months, years, let alone you know, consistency, practicing it slow, so something like this. You know, that's easy for me right now, but even just a couple of weeks ago, I just started doing that exercise a couple of weeks ago. That was actually really hard for me. And then uh, if I keep on I'm doing that over the weeks and over the months and years, you know, I'm going to be able to do that easily in every key, you know, I'll get there eventually. So just start practicing stuff slow. Be patient about it. And just a little bit every day and just walk away. You know, I know you want to be great and amazing now, especially if you're younger and all that. But uh, just take your time and stuff is all I have to say about that. But uh, I know Austin has some really good stuff here. I don't want to say too much. Uh, if you guys want more information or have any questions or are interested in Skype lessons, I do some Skype lessons, uh, send me a personal message or an email at airbonept at live.com. Uh, it's also on my Facebook page. Uh, if you don't, if I wasn't very clear about it or you don't remember it. Uh, but yeah, just send me a message uh, if you have any further questions and want to know more about this stuff. I can get into detail about a lot of this stuff and my own thoughts and philosophies about some of this stuff, swinging, the way I swing my notes, uh, there's, okay, I won't get into it now, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's it, you guys, thanks for watching, have a good day, bye.